Happy Friday, TGIF. It is Friday, April the 22nd, 2011. You're tuned into The Exchange, joined by Charlie Evers, George Kosotis, Fritz the Night Owl, and guest panelists this week, Mayor of the City of Marion, Scott Scherzer. We've got to thank our sponsors here before we end the week one more time. The Exchange today is brought to you by Peacock Water Conditioning, water experts since 1953, 1800 Marion Marysville Road. For further information, dial 740-387-6312. The Ohio Neck and Back Pain Relief Center, Scott M. Gray, D.C., across from the Marion Center between TSC and Kroger. For further information, dial 740-386-6580. And Night Owl Theater, located on the net at www.fritzlives.com. For further information, email nightowltv at yahoo.com. And again, that's N-I-T-E-O-W-L-T-V at yahoo.com. And now as we do each and every day and will continue to do on this Friday, let's check in with this day in history with Charlie Evers. Very memorable day in history because this day in God We Trust was included in all newly minted U.S. coins by an act of Congress. And the Oklahoma land rush began at noon with a single gunshot signaling a mad dash by thousands of settlers looking for gold. They were seeking to claim part of nearly two million acres made available by the federal government. The land originally belonged to uh, uh, two Indian tribes. That was way back in 1864 in God We Trust and 1889 for the gold rush. There you go, thank you, Charlie. And as we do each and every day, and it's a big movie night, it's Friday night. If you want something to do tonight, you're not sure what to do, you need a flick pick. You've come to the right place. We've got Fritz the Night Owl. Fritz? Well, uh, in all the years that I was doing uh, Night Owl on 10TV, we had, uh, it was on seven nights a week, but we showed all of the musicals with Fred and Ginger, and we had the comedies and the beach pictures and the war pictures and the westerns, et cetera, et cetera. But the most popular night was uh, the Friday night double chiller. So here we are on the, the exchange with Scott Spears and the crew. So uh, tonight I'm going to tell you about a good chiller that you might enjoy. It comes from 1964, Italian film, and it stars the incredible Boris Karloff. Uh, the movie is called Black Sabbath. And actually, uh, in Black Sabbath, you're getting three horror films for the price of one. Uh, it's three shorter horror films. Uh, hosted by Boris Karloff, who then also stars in the third little feature. Uh, the first one is called A Drop of Water, written by the great author Chekhov. This is not the Chekhov who was on the bridge of the Starship Enterprise. This was uh, Anton Chekhov. And in The Drop of Water deals with a nurse who is ten tending a lady clairvoyant and the lady mysteriously dies, and the nurse steals something from her, and uh, terrible things happen after that. A second story is called uh, The Telephone, in which uh, supposedly dead people, some, somebody who's supposedly dead, uh, for some reason, doesn't die whenever the phone rings. Uh, the people uh, hear these mysterious ghostly voices. And the third one, uh, the first two kind of build up to the third one, which is the best, and this is the one that uh, stars Boris Karloff. Uh, it's called uh, Verdolak, which means uh, vampire in Russian. And this was written also by a great Russian author, Leo Tolstoy. And it deals with uh, a man, a nobleman, who uh, becomes a vampire and turns his family uh, into vampires. Everything about this, uh, the, particularly the, the climax of this third film where uh, Boris the vampire uh, goes after members of his family, that will, uh, you want to have the lights on and, and the garlic strung around the house uh, when you watch that one. The movie is uh, Black Sabbath. It's got a great soundtrack going in it, uh, particularly one, one of the tracks features a great acoustic bass, got that nice uh, woody acoustic sound to it. Uh, Boris is at his uh, very, very best. The movie is called Black Sabbath. You'll see it on a Friday night. Hope that you enjoy. Boris Karloff was the voice in The Grinch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very deep, uh, perfect voice for that. 
That's Boris Karloff. Every time I think of Boris Karloff, first thing is the Grinch. That comes to my mind. When you think of Boris Karloff, which I'm sure is on a daily basis, Charlie, mm -hmm. what do you think about? I think of the, uh, who was it? Uh, Frankenstein. Yeah, yeah. He had the Bolt. screws in his yeah. neck. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, George? Boris Karloff, what I, what I was in the catering business for so many years. I went to a show in Chicago one time, and it was unbelievable. They had these rubber, uh, there was a little concession stand there, and they had these rubber ears and noses and tongues and uh, just different things. And I remember one of the movies of Boris Karloff. The guy would come out with the tray and the Boris in his beautiful dining room, and the tray come out, and he says, Orders, please, and they had ears and noses and uh, had tongues, and I bought those and I did that at a, at a reception one time. Oh, you're, you're, you're a Boris Karloff <laughs> imitator. I saw it in a movie and I had to do it because it was so different. Uh, <laughs> Mayor Boris Karloff, what comes to mind? You know, I I like war movies, and there was an early 1930s war movie on World War One, and it was about this British uh, platoon who gets lost in the desert and Boris Karloff was one of the soldiers, and he was kind of an antagonistic type of person, uh, but he was also a very religious character in this movie, and uh, the Arabians, uh, the, the, the Turks, I think the Ottoman Empire is who they sure. were fighting, and they, they hole up in this uh, oasis, and it was an interesting movie, so that, that's what I think of when it comes to Boris Karloff. Now, isn't that interesting? The movies are different. I think when you say a name in television, nine times out of 10, everybody thinks of the same thing. But a movie, an actor in a movie, an actress, it could be a different movie, different genre, a whole different thing. I think that's interesting. Charlie, uh, we've been talking uh, this week uh, off air about a garden project you have coming up. Yes. There is a garden project going on in Marion. We're hoping that it's gonna take hold uh, where Mark Street School was, it's good no more. There's three acres there. The man that owns it uh, has kindly said, well, yes, you can go ahead and use it as long as I have no liability and that people take care of it, clean up after they eat. And there's no charge. Uh, you can have a 10 by 10 foot plot. You can grow vegetables, flowers, uh, you know, anything legal, that is. And, Whoa! Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about, Charlie? <laughs> and you can eat it, can it, sell it, or whatever, but it's to get the Marianites out into the garden because the prices, you know, on produce are getting rather high. And it also will be a, a representation of Marion to maybe all the state of Ohio that, hey, those people really like to get out and do something, something for their good, their own good. And uh, no charge, like I said, there will be a little deposit you'll put down to guarantee that you'll clean it up that come this fall, then your money will come back to you. If people, if people want to be involved, what do they do? Well, they can call me at 389-2400. That's the easiest thing to do. And I'll send you on to the right person. I think this is a great thing because how many people live in the city who would like to maybe live in a country house? Everybody wants a country house. Uh, they don't have the room to garden. That's right. And this will bring people together of, in Marion. I mean, people will meet and maybe make new friends, people they've never seen before. They'll all be gardening. That'd be great. great. Oh, That'll be great. I think that's a great idea, Mayor. What do you think? I, I think it's extre extremely positive for the community. In fact, uh, we have tried to promote this. Uh, we uh, donated, not donated, but allowed a group to use a lot last year to do this. Unfortunately, the lot we allowed them to use in the city uh, there was too much uh, shade because of the large trees around it. You picked a perfect spot that's going to get a lot of sunlight, and I think it'll produce some very good results, not only in the garden, but for the community as a whole. You know, Mayor, we talked uh, a while back, a couple months maybe, uh, Charlie I think was around at that time, about the cemetery that had been mm -hmm. some trouble. Uh, where's that cemetery at, Charlie? Yeah, Quarry Street. Right. Quarry Street, first cemetery yeah. in Marion. Has anything ever come about with that? Well, I know they were doing some research on it. There was a group that met at the Marion County Historical Society, and they had to determine exactly how many people were buried there and where they were buried. We talked about putting up a fence around it to keep automobiles and bikes out of it and things of that nature. And, and uh, for many years, uh, in fact, many decades, a lot of the neighborhood kids have done pick up football and softball and kickball in there. 
And that's an inappropriate place to do those kind of activities. So we wanted to do something to designate it as a cemetery because I believe there are probably a lot of people that live in that neighborhood that don't realize it's a cemetery there. There's a little fenced in area with some headstones in it and I think they think that that's the only part that it's a cemetery, but actually the whole site is. And the city's gonna put up a sign indicating that it is a cemetery and uh, give notification to that. You know, I think that's interesting, and I, maybe Charlie and, and George will agree with me on this one, but it's, it's very nice to have access to the mayor, the city council, the county commissioners, to get things like that done. There are a lot of cities where that doesn't happen. And certainly since Scott and our current county commissioners and city council have been around, it's been very accessible. I think. What do you think, Charlie? I think so, too. That is so important. Otherwise, in, in some cities, the city government or county government may seem like they're miles and miles away, but not in Marion. Fritz, could you walk up to Mayor Coleman in Columbus and just start talking? Uh, no, I, I, I don't. The only mayor, the last mayor that I, well, I knew... Um, I would see Mayor Moody every now and then, and, and um, uh, uh, the man that had the flags. Uh, mayor Sensenbrenner. Yes. And uh, uh, Mayor Reinhardt. Uh, Buck. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> had a, a very good contact with him. We would meet at like charitable organizations, you know, charitable fundraisers and various civic things. But uh, actually, I worked with Mayor Sensenbrenner. He. Uh, when he was not mayor, he actually hosted some television programs on Channel 6, and I worked for the advertising agency that provided him with a copy, so I'd get together with the ex-mayor, and we'd go over the commercials, and he would uh, be the... He was a movie host on Channel 6. Really? For, yeah, for a number of years. He became mayor. Yeah, he had a big influence. Maybe that's your next career. I, <laughs> mayor. No, that's too job. <laughs> too, that, that's more work than I can handle. <laughs> you know, it's interesting how all things tie in. Talking about Buck Reinhardt, they're certainly not uh, planned, but Mary Ellen Withrow, mm -hmm. who Mayor Scherzer worked on her campaigns. I don't know if you worked on that one, did you? Uh, actually, I worked for her when she was the state treasurer. When she was. And then a little work on the campaign afterwards. When Mary Ellen was up here in October, when we celebrated Mary Ellen Withrow Day, I had the chance to sit down with Mary Ellen, and she talked about the first person that she beat to become state treasurer was Buck Reinhardt. Yeah, that's right. So, and she said that was an interesting race. I don't think she had too many fond memories of Buck Reinhardt. I don't want to put words in Mary <laughs> Ellen's mouth, but I don't think there were fond memories of Buck Reinhardt. Uh, you know, one thing I wanted to do while we had the mayor here, because you're always talking you forced, are forced, you know, usually to talk politics. I don't want to do that. I want to know what it's been like as you're closing out your first term. What's it been like to be mayor? I've never been mayor. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been incredibly exciting. Uh, there's obviously lots going on in government today, whether it's the federal government, the state government, or even local government. And, and we talked about just a moment ago about having access to, to your local elected officials. You know, municipal government, county government, whether it be township or school board, that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you are the closest to the people, bar none. We go to the same football games, we shop at the same stores, and we see each other out at restaurants. And I'm glad that people feel comfortable enough to come up to me. I work out at the YMCA five uh, times a week. And people will come up and say, yeah, I don't want to bother you while you're working out, but how about this? I'm glad they have the ability to do that. I'm glad they feel comfortable enough to do something like that. And um, I hope that continues on. But I think for me, uh, it's been about the people of Marion. There are some incredible people here. I mean, take George for example, all right? George is a neat guy. Love to sit down with George Casotas and others like him, whether it be Charlie Evers or, or your other panel members. I have sat down with them at one point or time in my administration just to get the background, the history of what has, has been going on in Marion for decades. Only 44 cities in the United States have presidents that come from them, yep. and we're one of the 44. So very proud to be a part of Marion. Well, you know, and, and being from Marion, being born and raised here, I think sometimes we take that for granted. And, you know, we drive by the Harding Memorial and the Harding Home, and, and, and not enough of us local natives get to those sites and appreciate the fact that we did have a president that came from here, and that's really cool. And, uh, uh, treasurer, yeah. Helen yeah, Withrow, can't forget her. A lot of good things have happened in Marion, Charlie. Well, that's right. It, it take books and books to describe everything. Marion, uh, at one time, was so prominent in heavy industry, 
and your shovels and, and everything, excavators, uh, and, and it goes on and on. Uh, but things have changed, but I, I just last, uh, well, Monday night, I learned of a, a business uh, involved in electronics repair and doing different work uh, for Whirlpool. They're expanding now. Uh, and it's good, boy, that, that's really good news. The uh, intermodal uh, railroad system, that's another big plus. I go down to the railroad station a lot of nights just to watch that train come through. That's a, sometimes 67 cars, double decked, that not burning diesel, but very little diesel in contrast to a semi-truck. Well, the people who've been through here, I mean, gosh, Charlie, we have connections with uh, Madge Guthrie. I think everybody in town mm -hmm. did. What a lady she was. And of course, we throw Mary Ellen Withrow in there. And Rod Serling was here for a bit in his career, started in broadcasting here in 1949 at WMRN. I mean, Fritz, it's a, I just recently found out that Sally Flowers did a TV show here in 1969 on CATV, which is now defunct. I was on there with her. What was Sally like? She called, they called, there was a guy that I grew up with that was the, uh, from Columbus. He came from Mary, went to Columbus, and he started that down at the old Ohio Edison building on South Main Street, where Mike Zucker is now. And that was where Sally's show was. And uh, he came up to the restaurant and said, George, bring us lunch down. So I took lunch down to Sally and him, and, uh, and Sally said, you come over here. She said, he told me about you, you're Greek. And so I got to sit down with Sally with that hat on, with the flowers on the top. It was fun. It was <laughs> she fun. could sing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I have a record of hers at home. Somebody yes, sent yes, me. She could sing. She could sing like nobody. Fritz, do you remember Sally? Oh, sure. And her sidekick, Billy Scott. He's still living. Yes. He's down in Florida, still and performing. It used to be more stores all over Ohio. Bring you Sally Flowers. Meeting time at Moore's. Uh, meeting time at Moore's. Meeting oh. time at Moore's. Boy, those are the golden days, aren't they? <laughs> I guess. Fritz, what's your been, what been your association with Marion over the years, just living 45 minutes up the road? Well, it's been rather limited until uh, you started inviting me up. I had not really spent a lot of time. I think, oh, five, six, seven, no, it's got to be in the 90s. Uh, I came to a few events here and uh, always liked it. But as I say, with with uh, five five sons and you know the day to day stuff, uh, I, I just just haven't had a chance to, to spend much time here. Home of the popcorn festival, a lot of good stuff goes on here in Marion. Mayor, uh, last question, just about as you know, as you end your first term here, uh, not politically, but what has been the best part personally, and what's been the worst? Because it's a heavy job. Well, again, I have to go back to the people of Marion, the people that I uh, am in contact with uh, on a daily basis sometimes and getting to know them on a, on a different level. And uh, I, I love going into the classrooms of the city schools. Uh, the kids are the greatest because a lot of them have never met a mayor, uh, but they know who the president is on TV. So I'll get questions like, do you have agents that protect you? Do you drive in a big black uh, you know, automobile? Does somebody drive you everywhere? And, and when you tell them no, it's like, wow, you, you drive yourself? <laughs> so that's really fun for me to do that. And I, without a doubt, in the economic times that we're living, I think dealing with the budget is the biggest issue right now. And having to, to, to look at somebody who just lost their job because the plant closed or they're downsizing, that's tough. That's tough on them, it's tough on their family. And then that translates into difficult financial times for city government as well. And uh, you never want to have to do something like that. But as the leader of this community, um, I'm tasked and charged with uh, the fiscal responsibility of the city of Marion. And that's what I have to stand up and do sometimes. That's a tough one. To provide the services that everyone's used to is hard to maintain if you don't, if the, a lot of people are unemployed, the money's not coming in. Right. And they still expect these services. People forget that, I think. I think people mm. forget that when the economy is down, whoever the mayor would be at this point or whoever's on city council, or it's going to be a harder time. I mean, you just got to know Absolutely. that. That's just, I mean, remember Doc Brown, when he came back for his second term, he didn't accept a salary, but I don't know that a whole lot was accomplished in the second term of Doc Brown. Now, the first term, he was great. Didn't he drag you out one morning and take you to the radio station or something? Well, no, he came to the radio station because 
Marion Harding High School never shut down for weather. Never. And one morning, Bob never. Brown came in to me on while well, I was on the air. He busted right through the door and always sat hit, down. Always and hitting said, the table. Always hitting the table. Evers, the Marion schools will stay open today. If I can walk here, they can walk to school. And uh, after he left, about 20 minutes later, I got a call from his wife. She says, I can't find my husband. <laughs> He was lost. Uh, where he disappeared to in the snow, I don't know. Shane Brown is one of the nicest ladies. Yes. It's it's interesting how because Doc Brown was bombastic, but Jane well, is. Well, he was a tank commander in World War II. That's where he got his gusto. <laughs> one of the first interviews I ever did, I went over and interviewed Jane at her house over uh, by Marian Catholic. And I sat down with Jane, and I wasn't really sure of myself. Then you get the recorder because you're always carrying your own stuff and microphones. And I sat down, and you're worried about the sound on radio. And Jane and I are just sitting in her living room. She had a dog the size of a tank in her house. And this thing was just <laughs> laying on me in the living room. And I'm trying to think of questions to ask Jane, but I'm afraid this dog's going to bite my leg off. That was my experience with Jane Brown, but a beautifully lovely woman. Still, still here in Marion. We're going to head over to the mailbag this week. My wife died two years ago. I still miss her very much. Life has lost its light with her gone. My daughters and their families are busy. They do tell me to come and visit. I am 59 and have been offered early retirement, but I can't imagine what I would do at home alone all day. Joe, Joseph, in Marion. Charlie, what do you do when the spouse is left and, uh... You, first of all, you join uh, Marion County Senior Citizens, and once you start going out there, you'll have plenty of company. What an important group that is. Oh, it is, yes. Absolutely. And there are a lot of ladies, too, looking for men. <laughs> that... <laughs> That might solve his problem. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. You might find a new mate happy, George. The men, the men die first. Always. They work themselves to death. Do you think that's what oh, it is? Oh, yes. Yes. Are you going first? Well, I don't know. I don't feel so good. <laughs> George, what do you think? Sue Wise Baker runs a nice thing out there. She, she does. Yes. A nice, nice. Uh, I've been out there a couple of times just to see what's going on. And everybody's busy doing something. They're playing euchre or they're... Playing pool, aerobics, they, aerobics. Yeah. They do everything out. They have dance classes. Uh, and that's the way to go. You know, if you're going to lose, you know, when you're going to lose. Oh yeah. May I say, may I sing a quick song? Go ahead. End the week. Give me the simple life. Now a cottage small is all I'm after. A cottage small is all I'm after. Not one that's spacious and wide. A house that's filled with joy and laughter, and the one you love inside. You might take the high road or the low road, but free from the care and strife, just give me tomatoes and mashed potatoes. I'll take the simple life. Mayor, uh, are you going to belt out a song? You, you know, <laughs> now you, you I, I not follow that. You, you know my wife is a, a music teacher. Oh, she, that's she, right. she is Very the singer good. in the family, the piano player. So you're never going to hear me belt out a song. That's George's that's area forte. over there. So. Yeah, he, why we, we, have all, we haven't talked about how nice he's dressed. Oh, thank you, Scott. Very thank nice. You. What would you do, though, in the situation with the uh, wife? Well, I got to agree with these gentlemen over here. Uh, we all know that the Senior Center is a, such a valuable uh, thing Absolutely. in our community. Go out there. He's, he's 59, I think you said. 59. He's still young enough. He's got a lot of life left in him. Um, it, when he retires, he's going to find something to do. I wish him the very best, and I'm sorry for his loss. Should he take early retirement? I, I think if he can financially do it, I think he should. Absolutely. <clears throat> find a lot of fun out there. Fritz, what do you think? Well, I slightly disagree with the mayor. If the man enjoys his job, if it were me, uh, I, I would continue to work. Assuming that I liked the job, then, then I would continue yeah. to work. Yeah. And again, it would be a thing that uh, you would have to uh, expand your social life, maybe through work or through a senior center, your church, uh, wherever. But uh, it's... Again, sad, and, and uh, uh, as I say, I agree with all of you, other than if he likes the job, yeah, keep the job. Not. Yeah, keep the job if you like it, but if you're ready to retire, go to the Senior Center. Have a good time. 
Joe, I hope all is well. And remember, if you have a question for the mailbag, you can join us on Facebook under the name The Exchange Marion, or email your questions to us at irmcommunication at gmail.com, or give us a call, 740-387-4649. Boy, it's been a fun week. Mayor, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come in these last two days. Well, thank you for having me, and I'd be happy to come back anytime. I enjoy it. Thank you. we got you. a great group here. Scott Spears with the group. See you next week.